Chill. Hi, Melissa. How are you? Hello. Good. At your lunch? Yes, yes. A good lunch. All right. As good as it gets. <laughs> great, great. <laughs> It is so, so hot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah, it's the weather is very hot these days. Yeah, yeah. You can just, you know, come out from the bathroom and then start sweating again immediately. Yeah, correct. Okay, so uh, friends, today we have Melissa here, Melissa Chan. Uh, she's a uh, PR expert, all right? Um, if you have, you know, just drop by and say your hellos and, you know, your love to her so that she knows that you're around. And if you have any questions, you know, please feel free to drop your questions anytime in the comment section so that we can read it out to her later on. All right. So, Melissa, how have you been so far during this MCO? Oh, wow. Seriously, it's been busier than ever. Uh, not busier in terms of business, but how chore, uh, a lot of things to do. I believe that every parent would be able to relate to this nonstop. <laughs> at home so yeah it's just not not easy to juggle in between but we just have to make do with what we can this is yeah. the new norm right now yeah this is this is the new norm yeah we yeah. during the normal times i think those with kids will agree uh we have some quiet time on our own without kids right uh, yeah. and now it's just like it's you know all the time right Correct. And they have your full attention right now. And you don't <laughs> give them attention, they will, well, you know kids, they will find their creative ways to actually get your attention. Oh, yeah. So, Tell me about yeah. It. There goes the work. <laughs> okay. So, let me just see. Uh, we have some friends coming in. All right. And, um, so, let me just uh, introduce Melissa first. Okay. Melissa is a good friend and she's also, uh, let me just, she's, she's actually from PR, she's a PR advisor from EA Creative Media Relations, right? She has been re running this firm on her own for seven years now. Uh, but she, before that, she has been always involved in public relations. Uh, she has actually more than 15 years uh, of experience in the PR side, uh, PR, marketing, and branding okay so today she's a you know uh, she'll be a really a good authority to speak about uh, pr right so the thing the subject today is about press releases many companies yeah. are actually unaware that uh, they can actually do the press releases themselves all right yeah. uh, and um, the only thing is uh, the the media digital or even uh, offline media, like newspapers and all, they receive tons of press releases every day. So how do you actually differentiate yourself and how do you actually write one? Okay, so today we have Melissa sharing. Melissa, uh, we would love to hear all your tips, especially the five secrets of creating your own press release. Right, over yeah. to you, Melissa. All right, okay, um, like you have said, uh, the media these days are getting so many uh, press releases from all the different organizations. So the media themselves are very limited these days. A lot are already no longer existing, especially the traditional media. A lot okay. of them already no longer are uh, in the market. And Millennial also, like you know, is no longer uh, selling the hard copies. So everyone is going towards the digital age right now. So as the media are shrinking, more people actually wanted their attention. So how do you actually capture them instead of, uh, since they have been, been bombarded with so many press releases in a day, okay? So first of all, when you create a press release, um, it's the most fundamental uh, document that you need when you wanted to highlight your products or whatever to the media, okay? so. First of it is that you know you must know your objectives. What are the objectives? That is the key number one. Know your objectives because when you want to prepare a press release, you have to have an objective to see whether is it an anniversary or is it a new product launch or whether is it uh, you want the media to know you are existing in the market. 
So there are different ways uh, of doing it. Once you know the objectives already, then you can actually slowly come uh, to create your content. All right. So content will be the second tip of uh, the press release. So what uh, the content is, is that you have to give as much info, info in terms of what is your objectives about if let's say for example you're going to do a product launch or a new services or a new introduction so the content must be related to your objective instead of running around um, like a headless chicken okay um, maximize it to have three topics in one press release like for example you say okay uh we are going to do a product launch right now all right the introduction part uh then where it comes into the product launch what are the product launches that you have then the next is you can actually highlight maybe one or two things in the future or within the pipeline of what your company is going to do so keep it minimum so you have your focus over there because certain clients they do come and ask can i put in more things into my press release yes you can but you will drown out your main focus like for example right. you want to do a highlight of a new launch but right. you add in too many things inside it becomes um like roja like this inside right. and the media wouldn't even know where to actually pick it up from so this is remain it as simple as it is, as clean as it is. Then um, what other inputs that you can actually add in to, to ease out the media's, um, what you call that, work, is that, for example, after the introduction and everything is done already, who are they supposed to look for if they wanted to know more information? Who is the person to talk to? Uh, do you have any contacts, any email? Social media, if you want to put inside, by all means. Whatever you feel like highlighting towards the media, put it in. Since right now we are in the digital age, highlight your social media, your website, whatever that can actually attract the public and also in terms of the media to get more information. So simple as that. Right. Next is, uh, okay, before I jump, sorry, I jump over already. Actually, okay. before you come to the content, you need a very strong headline. Mm. The headline is whereby you will capture the media's attention. Like for once, I did for uh, a client of mine, a uh, ticket to you. They are the, uh, one of the uh, online ticketing platform, right. uh, well-known. So we did a press release for them and then uh, we sent it out to the media. And what I expected was maybe about 10 or less than that to actually capture their attention. But eventually more than 20 actually featured them online wow. media, more than 20 online media featured them. Not only coming in from Malaysia, it's from Singapore, uh, US, New Zealand. So this is something which you can actually do have a catchy headline that actually uh, grabs the media attention so this will actually help a company uh, press release to be actually uh, been chosen to be uh, shortlisted for more uh, to be highlighted for the future um, write-ups or anything that they need all right so do something which is newsworthy uh, instead of just sharing sometimes certain um, what you call that uh, organization or businesses they like to highlight they are good in certain things right no harm in highlighting that okay. but tell them more into uh, educational wise like for example how they can actually or how their services and products can actually help the public or their target mm. audience so this way, people will be able to relate to instead of my uh, product is the best, 
it can be doing this and this and this. But if their target audience can't relate to it, it defer the purpose as well. So you you get what I mean on 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 this part. So right. yeah, these are the certain things when it comes to content, you really have to be um, more specific, right? Got so uh, the next one will be uh, the most interesting one because mm. why? After you have the headline, after you have your objective, you have your content. Okay. This is where majority of the uh, businesses are having trouble with. Comes okay. to pictures. Right. Pictures are the easiest of all because right now we can get pictures anywhere. We can actually take our pictures through the uh, what you call that our mobile phones. Right. You no know, harm in doing it, but. There is a certain way of doing because the media wants it in a different method, all right? So let's just share, try out with an Apple, okay? Wow. okay. Uh, Apple is whereby I use it as a good example, all right? right. Because first of it, uh, I don't want to highlight anything that comes with copyright. Right. Because pictures are quite, um, what you call that? Uh, it's a bit tricky when you use pictures on social media because there are lots of copyrights and surprisingly quite a number of celebrities, international celebrities are being sued by their, uh, what you call that, photographers because of misuse of the uh, pictures. So we don't want people to get caught in this situation. So, right. uh, but this one, when it comes to copyright, is another huge area as well. So maybe what I can do is to show some good examples of what the media is looking for when it comes to pictures. Maybe you can go to the first slide. Okay. Um, Anin, the first slide, please. Okay, let me just add this in. Okay. Yeah. All right. Here is where we still have our normal Apple. Okay. This is where we say by this is a generic product picture. Okay. Right. It stands alone, it has a background. So you can have two choices. One is with the background, the other one is a totally white clear background. So the media can play around with it, all right? Then the next picture, uh, the next slide. Okay, this is what we call by lifestyles picture. So you have the apple with different background, different lighting, different feel to it. So when you send these pictures to the media, they can play around with their teams because sometimes the media have their own different teams and they felt that, okay, this particular picture can fit or suits my team. This is where also it can actually help you to enhance the media to actually capture uh, your, to, to feature your press release or your, uh, your services in the news, okay? So the next one. Okay, here we'll have group pictures. That is individual, all right? Group pictures, it can be with a couple of, um, if you have a product range, you can actually display it in this way, okay? If not, it can be like just now, the standalone pictures, but with different backgrounds. So here the media will have a selection of like, okay, I can play around with the individual, I can play around with the group pictures. So you have a different uh, feel, and the different um, pictures to actually share it out to the media, right? All right, next one. Okay, those, the first three will be the ones that I said, good pictures that really focus and to stand out. So when I say Apple, okay, these are Apple's pictures as well. Am I right? Okay, but do you felt that is totally different from the first three pictures that I have shared. Yeah, very much. Okay. Yep. All right. The first picture with the fruit basket. The product itself is apple, right? Okay. The fruit basket in this slide. The apple is that. Am I right? But right. it's been surrounded by others' fruit. So it's been drowned in. The focus is not there. So you lack the focus. So this is this will not highlight the product 
well enough to compare with just now the first three slides. Same goes with the next one with the snail and it's been digitalized. It's a good picture, but it might not suit what your objectives are. Let's just say you are having a new um, harvest of apples. So if you digitalize the apple in this method, it actually defer your objectives of what you're trying to highlight to the media. So keep it original, as original as possible, and keep it simple. And the last picture, you have the apple there, which is good. But does the background actually works to highlight or to enhance the, the product itself? Because the background might not be suitable to what your objectives are. So these are the things that actually um, really take into consideration because um, many people always has good content. But when it comes to pictures, they say, oh my God, I don't have great pictures. I don't have any pictures to, to share with. And they start panicking. That's where they find out that, okay, we need to do a lot of things when it comes to pictures wise. So let's go to the next slide. Okay, these are really out of focus. You are highlighting a product, you are highlighting an apple, but you're only showing the stem or the skin. So this will not actually work with the media because it doesn't share with the original objective of what you're trying to tell because there's no story here as well. So if you, let's just say, for example, you share this type of pictures out, definitely the media will not actually pick it up and it will make the media uh, a little bit more work for them is that they have to search for pictures that can actually relate to your press release. So the next slide. Okay, this will be one of the worst pictures um, that majority of the, uh, that I have received before. It's out of focus, background is messy, uh, and it's just been taken off-handedly. So pictures-wise, I would actually like to highlight that you, for every uh, businesses, you should actually invest in good quality pictures. Because why? First of all, like I said, copyright is very sensitive. If you take other people's picture, you may need to credit them or you may need to actually pay them for it. But if you actually invest in your own photographer, the pictures are for you for life. You can actually use it for quite a number of things instead of buying pictures from other people. So invest in good photographer who can actually uh, take pictures that may actually uh, usable. So your investment will actually last you for a couple of years instead of just only one shot for one program or one uh, awareness, right? So that's all for my slides at the moment in terms of uh, pictures-wise. But right. another Let thing that I, another thing also I would like to highlight uh, when it comes to the pictures is uh, when you send out the pictures that time, always um, keep the file or label it, uh, how to say, label it in the proper way. Like for example, mm. apples. You have so many types of apples. You have Fuji, you have Red Rose, you have New Zealand apples. So you don't give the media uh, this picture, okay? This is an apple. So if the media wanted to feature this or to highlight this, they, what are they going to credit it? How are they going to name this product? If let's say, for example, your product has a name, name it accordingly to the product. Mm. Or if you have an individual, key in the individual's name. Like for example, you have a CEO. So why not key in the full CEO's name with the proper title and everything? So it makes the media's work easier. They can just pick it up on the spot. And when it comes to group pictures, it's also another tricky thing. 
event pictures, group pictures, all this comes into consideration. So, for example, if you have a big group of people having an open house and you send a picture to the media and you label them open house gathering, it defer the purpose. The media wanted to feature it, but how are they going to capture it? So this will lose out another chance of the media featuring. All right. So these are the few things that you really, as a company, they really need to uh, take notice of uh, when it comes to prepare a good press release. So the media, you help the media to ease their work because they have already so many. Once they open up that yours is okay, you have all the information, you have all the pictures, the criteria is here. Either the KIV to say that, okay, maybe I wait until a suitable team to put in this uh, feature in, or maybe I can just select a certain schedule that I can put it in. So they don't have to call you up or to ask for information. Because sometimes if they need to highlight, uh, they need to get further information, they will actually KIV. So once they KIV it, you, the 50% of losing the feature is even more already. Mm. All right. So I'm coming into my last point. So altogether, yeah, this will be my last point. The last point is that you must know your media as well. Okay. Um, we have, let's say for example, a newspaper. Newspaper, we have divided into so many different sessions. We have lifestyle, we have news, we have sports, uh, FMB, and so on. So for your industry, which department or which category does it suit it? Should we go to the news? Should we go to the lifestyle section? Or what's not? So like, for example, if I talk about the apple, all right, apple is food, it can be yeah. health, right. it can be lifestyle, right? So I have three different categories here. So if you have three different categories, you have bigger awareness. Then you can actually send it to the right department. Because, for example, if this is an apple, you send it to the news department, uh, send it to the sports department, it's not relatable, all right? So you must understand the media plus your own industry. Then only you can actually send it out to the right editor. Because sometimes um, many does not understand that I can just send it to the generic uh, so-called email or the generic editor. Then the editor can sort it out for me. No, that is not the way they will never sort it out. As long as they found out that it's a different section, they will just put it one side. Because they will actually focus more on to what they are supposed to do. Okay? Right. Yep. So, lastly, okay. another important so, tip. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Another important tip, sorry. Yes. Uh, is that once you have sent out the press release, you wanted to follow up with the media, always right. reply the media if they do call you up. Like for example, they said they, they wanted to get more information, but you are either not around or someone supposed to be there, the PIC is not in, or you want to get hold of further information. Feel, don't be afraid of the media. Just tell them, okay, uh, we need a little bit of time to get back to you. But be specific. Like, okay, I'll get back to you by next week, Monday or Tuesday. Uh, I'll give you the details. So at least the media knows by next week, then they will give you a call. Instead, okay, I'll get back to you. But then three days, four days or one week, there's still no news then instead of the media keep on waiting for you, they might they would think, okay, just drop it. I will get another person to be featured. So these are the few tips. Okay, awesome tips there. Right. So let's just uh, 
say hello a little bit to all those people who have come in and to greet you, right? Uh, we no have uh, Wasala. Uh, we have Hi. Wasala here and then Reka, Bob Lau, uh, Rosalind, and we have YC Chia, okay? Edward Tai, uh, Nehru. Okay, Nehru said, uh, superb topic, Vyasa and Melissa. I've been waiting to get this knowledge for a long time. Really okay. appreciate it. Okay, and he's, he's actually dropped in a question also, okay, which okay. I'll read after this. Let me just say hello to everyone first. Um, we have uh, from LinkedIn, we have Tracy Leong, all right, saying hello. All right. And then we have Anis Nadira. She's actually a PR student, okay. Ah, uh, all right. She's a good writer, very <laughs> nice. And then we have Vicky Krishna saying hello, both COVID-19 greetings. Okay. <laughs> and then we have Vimala Supaya, uh, Supaya who is actually a coach, ICF coach. Uh, she said, hello, Vyasa, hello, Melissa. And then we have, uh, uh, yeah, Vicky has also asked a question, okay? The question is, headline versus content versus creativity, which drives the media the most? Okay, so we can actually keep this question to answer after this, right? All right. And then Ashwina has said hello to you. Okay. All right. And uh, Chan, yeah, I'm sure you know Chan, right? Chan Seo Hong uh, yes. who said hello. And we have uh, Ringanathan to, who said hello. And then YC Chia, very helpful and professional. Okay. So let's just go to the first question, which is actually from Nehru. Uh, right. he said, I realize many people. Uh, especially those uh, example, those in politics, issue press statement, not because it makes sense, but because they wanted to be in the news, all right? Uh, perhaps it makes their presence felt in the industry. Would this be a good idea to do this? Okay. Um, you, as long as you know your objective, but hmm. you just want to get the media to actually to feature you, right. all right? Uh, without any strong objective of why, mm -hmm. the chances of you being getting to be featured is actually equals to almost zero. Mm -hmm. Because if, let's say, for example, uh, political, right now, we are very much in a political situation because the economy is not good, with the pandemic yeah. is on. Right. So um, a lot of political situation is going on around, all right? So the media, of course, will be uh, putting a lot of focus in this. But as a company, you just want to, the media to feature you, but without any strong reason, it's very difficult because they will actually give um, their criteria, or should I say their priority towards the paid clientele, all right? Mm. Then once after that, only they will screen through. Is there something which is educational enough for my readers to read. Then if finally, maybe that 5%, maybe only that 5% that they felt that, okay, I still got some ample space here. Maybe I can feature something which is uh, non-related. Maybe it can be humor, it can be something inspirational, comics or whatever, then yes. But if you just focus on something which is um, without any, like I said, without any strong objective of why you want to be featured is, I would say, better not. Because uh, one, the media will know that, okay, there's no substance in, in this particular press release. So I would not actually want to put my effort in it. I would just put it one side. Because let's say, for example, you just only uh, give out a simple press release to say, okay, we are here, we want to get featured. Mm -hmm. But the media has to work harder because first of it is like to get to know you, to know, okay, why, are, why is the reason that you want to be featured? So they wanted to know more. They need to dig up more information. That would take up a lot of time and effort. So they right. would rather actually put it one side. Okay. So hope I <laughs> answer his uh, question. Nehru's question, right? So Nehru, yeah. hope, hope that answers. But I suppose uh, politicians also 
uh, they have an easier path to the press, right? You know, they can issue statements and, you know, they get always quoted, whether it's for, you know, good stuff or silly stuff, right? Which yes. is happening quite, quite a bit right, right now. Right. Or All sometimes right. maybe they're misquoted and, you know, it goes. I, 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 I can't speak for them though. Lah. Yes, true. Because yeah. like, for example, politicians, celebrities. Yeah. So these are the people they don't need to do much. The right. media will actually be focusing on them already because mm. that's another part of the story it's because they can actually, especially in terms of the news, the news session, they will highlight more into them and also tabloid. Tabloid will be more focusing on uh, celebrities, what are they right. doing, what are they eating, what are they up to. So these are the things. So now I say, know the objective and know your media. So once right. you know, all, once you have this uh, two key focus there, it's easier for you to uh, prepare the press release and to hand, to send it out to, to the media. Okay. So, uh, okay, there are a few more questions and a few more people saying hello. Uh, all right. Right. So, um, Ashwina said hello and then Fong Li Ho said hello, right? Hi. She has got a question here also. Okay. And then we have Kartina, Rosalie, and then Cheryl Vita. All right. Okay. Uh, and okay, the next question is uh, from Vicky Krishna. Uh, the right. question is headline versus content versus creativity. Which drives the media the most? Okay. All right. I will say the headline. Headline. Because the headline is whereby they capture it because okay. it's like a submarine. Once you have that headline, then only they will read through the content. The press release does not need to be too creative unless you yourself is writing an article online that you mm -hmm. want the public to read. Then it's a different case. So for press release, highlight the title, keep it as catchy as possible, keep it uh, something, put yourself in the reader's shoes, for example. Let them know something that they wanted to know, they wanted to listen, instead of you telling, okay? Then only you come to the content. Keep the content clean, straight to the point, and as much detail as possible, and you're done. Uh, okay. All right. So, uh, and another question is, uh, okay, Kartina said, I agree with Melissa that uh, do not issue a press release for the sake of it. Sometimes yeah. targeted media pitch to a specific journalist might help. Right? Yeah, correct, correct. Because um, certain media, they wanted their stories as well. So sometimes they will actually pitch out the story towards their own journalists. They will have a brainstorming with their own journalists to actually go through what they are supposed to do. So the journalists will actually be the creative person to come up from head to toe whether you need video, whether you need a uh, written content, how is it going to be like, everything will be uh, discussed and the journalists will have to do it. So sometimes, yes, the journalists also will actually ask us, uh, the PR people like, okay, Mel, do you know anyone from this particular industry? So then I will actually share and brainstorm with them like, okay, who I can introduce to. So we work two ways so it's not necessary only from for me that i actually help out the count uh organizations to actually get the awareness but i also will be helping the media to actually get who they want like for example i did uh organize uh what you call that a cover shoot for a magazine Kluaga magazine that was last year ago uh they did it in a bungalow because they need a new showroom so i actually organized it for them to actually uh had the picture taken in the bungalow and eventually that particular cover plus the features was uh done by them is equivalent to 30k wow yeah that's a huge amount so for the property developer they get free 30k of awareness through uh, letting them to actually take the pictures over there. Right, right. So it's a mix and it's kind of like collaboration. Yes, correct. Correct. Mm. Okay. 
So uh, Fong Li Ho, right? Um, she said uh, she asked a question, Melissa, who to send PR from business chamber, please? That means, uh, yeah, for business, she's. Uh, I think she's from the business chamber. How okay. who does she send an article to? Who should she write to, and all? Okay. Um, when it comes to business, it's also quite was. Okay. Is it finance? Is it human resource? uh what is it about okay because you can actually send it towards the generic news which is like the newspaper uh or even though digital centers you can actually send to the g generic news section unless you have a proper objective like for example you want to highlight about the economy then yes you can actually send it out to the finance and the economy section but right. if you don't, just send it towards the generic business desk is more than sufficient. Okay. So how do how do people how will people know who to write to? Uh, like let's say uh, let's say this is an X Y Z company that sells maybe uh, a particular service. Okay. All right. Uh, let's say they do service to, uh, for example, disinfect the whole building. How? All right. Who should they write to? What should they write? You know, you know. Do you have any ideas on that? Okay. Um, this is something which they, from the company, they have to be a little bit, um, what you call that? I have to write in a bit, lah, huh? right. right? Because there's yeah. no shortcut over here. Okay. You need to call up the media, okay, to say that okay, I have this particular press release. Who can I send it to? Mm -hmm. That's why I say. Again, objective are the key. Because once you have your objective, then only, even though for the person, the operator to say that, okay, you can send it to the uh, health editor. Okay? Like, for example, you're talking about something to disinfect a building. So it can be lifestyle, it can be health. This is something which I can see. So they can actually call up the generic line and to ask who are the editors they can actually send it to. Or else sometimes the operator will just tell you, okay, you can send it to this particular email and the editor will pick it up. So uh, these are the things that they need to actually go and look for themselves. Because uh, they are not, not everything has been laid out up front for them. So we still have to take the initiative to actually go and dig up a little bit more information. So here also, know your media. Get to know them, get to know who are they, then right. you will know how to actually send out the press release. Okay. So what's the, what's the difference between a press release and a, let's say a paid advertisement? Okay. Press release is whereby you have your objective, your company's background and everything. Okay. Right. A paid advertisement is very much a picture and what is it about? There's no editorial content. Okay. All right. It means there's no uh, written content in it. So every time if you see, for example, um, this particular company is doing sales. They are having sales and Apple sales. Okay. That's just for example. Okay. They're having Apple right. sales. And the sales is at this particular period and, and when. So that is a paid advertisement. Right. So for press release, when you feed, you will get, you will be featured. It won't come out as an ad. It will mm -hmm. come out as a story. Okay. Like for example, if you're highlighting a new, um, a new launch of a fruit or something like this, then they will put under a new section to say that, okay, what is happening now? If you notice that certain uh, media, they have what's new what's happening so they will put under that section so when you mm -hmm. click it on then they they will actually put xyz company just launched this new uh detox apple juice or something like this right 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 so that's the difference and pay advertisement you can actually select when you can actually feature it you can select the the the, the page size when is it 
and whether you want it in black and white or in color. But whereas for the press release, when you get the feature, it's not paid. Mm. And it's really up to the uh, editor's decision. When is it going to come out? How big is it? What information they are going to put in? All these are really based on their information. Mm -hmm. So these are something which we cannot control. We can't tell them, okay, hey, I just sent you the press release. Can you, send, uh, can you feature it by tomorrow? There's no way. It's not going to happen. Yeah, there's no way because unless we are a paid advertisers, if you paid for it, then you can always tell them, okay, I want to get this feature by when and when. Then you just have to work things out with them. Right. So, like, so the the in a in a summary, the paid advertisements you can control it more, but you yes. end up spending a lot of money. But yep. uh, if you are maybe you would also want to take opportunity of the free press releases that can come up maybe not immediately but in the future so yes. you have a mix of paid and uh, free press yes. correct out there. if the company have a budget they can always uh, invest in a paid advertisement but instead of advertisement i would prefer to say or to share make it into an advertorial mm -hmm. advertorial is whereby you can actually educate their target audience who they are they can actually send in their press releases to them to say that okay i want to highlight something like this then the, the editor will be able to actually craft up something according to that and be approved by them so that is another way of doing it okay all, all right. right so cheryl cheryl vita said something very amusing is it okay. she said in advertising we pay in PR, we pray. <laughs> <laughs> Which is true. I do agree. I do agree. Because when it comes to PR, you really actually cross, crossing your fingers and you're hoping, okay, please pick it up. Please pick it up. So, right. yeah, there will be times like this. Okay. So, she also, uh, Cheryl also asked a question, right? Uh, press releases need to be catered according to the industry in terms of style, length etc uh, what are your thoughts when i was working in the industry i noticed it was different in hospitality than in oil and gas for instance okay yes different industry they have different way of doing it so also it comes back to the organizations um what you call the sop how well mm -hmm. they wanted the media to know about them but mm -hmm. what i can say is when you prepare a press release, keep it in a way that is very easy to read. It, it doesn't have to be too technical. Keep out the things, the technical stuff towards, maybe you can actually uh, I'll say pitch it for a face-to-face -face interview. That would be better. But if you want to send out the press release, keep it simple, but yet detailed enough for the media to actually highlight it. Yes, every industry is different, but keep it in a way that the media will actually want to, okay, I want to feature this. This is something new, okay, regardless from which industry it is, but this is something which I really want to highlight towards the public. So keep it that way, then you have a higher chance. Mm -hmm. Got it. Got it. Okay. So what what is the uh, like you know benefit of a PR a press release compared to an advertisement? This is one of the questions uh, uh, from LinkedIn. Okay, uh, of course, when it comes to pay advertisement, you need to have a big budget, all right. And each time you pay for an advertisement, it only lasts you for only one session. Right. But right now, if let's say for example digital, your ads will be there. Okay, but sometimes also, like for example, I believe that you guys will be familiar with banners ad or whether it's a poster or whatever. Then again, this also only lasted only maybe between two to four weeks unless mm -hmm. you have another budget to actually keep on rolling it for another maybe six months or something. All right, but in terms of press release, you, uh, let's just say, for example, if you invest in a PR agency, Let's just say, okay, this ad costs you about 30k, all right, but you only get one feature 
in this particular media. Am I right? Okay. Yeah. But let's just say, for example, you take this 30K, you invest in a PR firm or an agency to do it for you. You may get more than five features. Why not? Hmm. Okay. Then if, for example, these people who wanted to actually highlight their own press release to the media, then they can actually do this. But they need to keep the consistency up. It means right. once they send it up, if the media are not picking it up, maybe you can actually call up the media or the editor to check them up. Uh, is there anything that they needed or something like this? If not, then maybe a couple of months later, you just send again. No harm about it. And then right now, if we go into digital, it's always through email. Only. Right. So in terms of uh, media, right? Uh, media online and offline. What What do you think about, you know, the... Are both very important at this time or should you just focus on one? Uh, online and offline, right? Okay. Yeah. Actually, if right now we talk about MCO, we are all digital right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. For the traditional media, we only left with the newspaper. And in terms of the working, the workforce, or in terms of the writers, the journalists who are working right now, are still very much they work from home. So right. there are limitations over there right now. Okay. For now, I would say focus on digital first. Okay. Until maybe six or eight months down the road, if MCO has been lifted, then yes, by all means, just go all out. When I say go all out, you can actually target towards the magazines, the newspaper, and towards also with this digital uh, channels. What what are some of the online uh, media that okay. accepts uh, press releases? You know, could uh, you give some names? Okay, majority of them actually accept. Okay, like uh, the Star Online, they still do. Okay, the Sun. These are the business sections. Okay, um, then you can actually forward it towards individual type of uh, what you call that websites like for example if they are focusing on beauty or lifestyle products they can actually highlight towards pamper.mine or bureau 24 7 these two are very much focused into lifestyle and beauty so then again who are your target audience and who what industry you are in then only you'll be able to know which one that you're supposed to focus in. Right. But if not, if you say in terms of the generic ones, will be like the Star Online, The Sun, NSD, uh, Millennium, uh, then of course, says.com, Walken Post. So these are the few of them that you can actually look into. Right. Okay. Now, uh, another question is from, okay, there, there are people who want to get connected to you to find out more about press right. releases, right? Uh, I'll direct right. them to you later on. Right. And also Cheryl with us said, do you think that building a close relationship with a media journalist is an important element in ensuring your press release is noticed um, okay, or featured? How will you build... The relationship with the press okay this is a lot deeper question okay yes. for someone who's dealing with the media a lot more right yeah, yeah. all right uh yes it's very very important because first of all once you build the relationship between you and the media it's not only between you and the company you don't come in for yes you represent the company all right but the media knows you as who you are they build the trust between both of you all right so once they trusted you, they know that, okay, your things can be trusted. I can actually feature it. Because the media doesn't want to feature something, then all of a sudden, hey, how come this one is not right? This is not meant to be in the market. Or something comes in in between. Then the media will get uh, a bad name for no reason. So if they know who you are, they have the trust in you, the chance of you getting your things featured will be slightly higher compared to someone they don't know. So how you want to build the relationship between yourself and the editor is just once in a while, just drop by and say hi. Let Physically. them know. 
either physically or either through an email or even though a phone call. But if you got their contact number, like for example, you got their mobile number, it's best that you don't call them uh, directly on the mobile. No matter what, uh, have a little bit of uh, leeway, call them on their office number. But of course, now at this time, no choice. We still have to call them on the mobile. But if during normal days, the office phone is, is, is good enough. And don't call them before 9 and after 6. Because they have a time limit there as well. They, right. are, they are employees. They right. don't own the company. All right. They are unlike us who are business people. We are working throughout. But they are not. So they have their private time as well. So if you call them after these particular hours, of course, they will never pick up the phone. So here right. is another thing. Once you actually respect them in terms of their work hours, they also will actually have a better respect back in who you are. Got it. Okay. So uh, this is another question from Ashwina Pari, right? Okay. In terms of jobs of PR. All right. Uh, so job-wise, is working in a PR agency better or a PR de department in different industries is worth as well? A PR okay. agency versus a PR department in a company. Okay, both has its pros and cons. Okay. Okay. Uh, if let's say, for example, you work in a PR firm, all right, you will not only focus in one client you'll be handling maybe more than three or four profiles at the same time. So will you be able to handle the job, the job scope? That is one. And secondly, will you confuse between your clients? Like you've got five clients. Will you confuse in terms of the job itself? Because sometimes when you go and meet up with an editor, you're supposed to talk about client A, but you accidentally talk about client B. So these are some of the things that I would say that they have to take uh, notice of. Then, as in you're working for a PR department, you're only maybe focusing on one or two, either services or products. So it's coming from internal. But whereas uh, the PR firm, you're coming in as a third party. So maybe certain things that you will not be able to know internally when you work in a PR firm. But if you work from internally from a PR department, you get to know everything from A to Z. So these are the two, these are the few things I would say that's the difference. But of course, depending on what is your own needs, okay, both sides will be able to learn a lot of things, all right? But whatever you're learning from is very different from both sides' angle. From the PR agency point yeah. and also from the from a PR department in the company, correct, right? Correct, Because, for example, PR agency, you're only liaising between the, uh, what you call that, the client and the editor. But whereas if you are working from an organization as a PR department, You'll be, you'll be liaising with quite a number of uh, head, um, few managers or whatever it is, then only you can actually liaise with the uh, media. Right. Okay. So just for friends, um, if you have questions, we're going to finish the show very soon. So if you have questions, you know, just, you know, just drop them here. And if you just like to say hi to Melissa again, you know, just uh, say hi right now before we close off soon, right? So, Melissa, just another question, right? Uh, <clears throat> uh, why does uh, sometime, why do digital media or offline media, they don't uh, accept your press release? Why does that happen? Okay, first of it, it could be unrelated type of uh, news. Okay. All right. Secondly, is the pictures is not usable. Okay. All right. 
thirdly, it could be they send it to a wrong media or the wrong section. Mm -hmm. Like I said, maybe um, the Apple, they send mm -hmm. it to the sports department. Mm -hmm. Or the Apple, they send it to the news department. Right. So these could be the few reasons that I could think of. Mm -hmm. Or another thing is that they don't have a unique value proposition. Right. It actually stands out from the rest. All right. Let's say, for example, you have a group of a, a, a bunch of apples together, but you have one black apple over there that stands yeah. out. Yeah. So it will be featured. But if this particular apple is red, it will be drowned out around the rest of the crowd as well. So same goes with the organization. What you have, what are you offering? What is your uniqueness that the media can actually feature? So if you it drives down back to the objective, know your objective. So if they're able to know where their uniqueness is, they can actually feature that. Then yes, that will actually capture a better a better chance for them to be uh, getting featured in the media. Right. Okay. So and also sometimes like uh, I I think this is what I've heard from you before. So sometimes like the uh, there's uh, they write the media writes according to themes, right? And yes. sometimes if your press release does not fit that theme during that time, then you got to wait till the press release uh, fits a particular theme that is upcoming. Correct. Am I right? Correct. Would you be able Correct. to share a little bit more about it? what is themes about? Uh, themes as in T-H-E-M-E, -E, right? Yes, correct, correct. All right. Um, for example, Raya is coming up. Fossil yeah. is coming up. So yeah. majority of the media will be actually focusing, okay, what are they going to do right now because MCO is happening? Yes. So what can they do to actually help these people to celebrate uh, Ramadan and Raya to ease out, all right? So right now, media will be focusing very much on this. Then the next, uh, maybe towards in August, we have Merdeka. And then we have one Malaysia, which is in September. So maybe it's something along the line. Okay, like for example, if this company is like, okay, we are celebrating 60 years uh, coincidentally together with um, one Malaysia day or maybe uh Madeka. so then yes the media may actually feature it because it actually suits the team okay national day for example or another one is that mother's day mother's day or father's day so if you have something which is towards there uh then the media will actually capture it unless you say okay mother's day is in may father's day is in june then you send in your press release, okay, come and celebrate Parents' Day in August with us. Right. So you get what I mean. So you miss out the chance to be featured earlier on the right team, but then you send it out at a different timing. How long should you send that, that uh, for example, your press release ahead? For example, in May, uh, uh, Mother's Day is coming up, right? Yep. And Raya is coming up at the, towards the end of April. Correct. Towards uh, end, no, of towards end of May. End right? of May. Yeah. So there's end of there's a beginning of May. There's a, a Mother's Day, mm -hmm. right? Middle of May, right? If I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And then there's end of May. Uh, Raya is coming up, right? All so right. how early should you send your press releases uh, ahead of time so that it comes out in the right time? All right. Okay, when it comes to digital, give a leeway of at least one month. One month? Yeah, at least a one month period. Okay. okay. Because they also have their own schedule to actually be screened up and everything. So for traditional media, uh, let's say newspaper, and also, let's say newspaper first, all right? right? Also between one and one and a half months, all right? However, for new, uh, magazines, uh, printed magazines, you need at least two months to three months in advance. Mm. 
All right. Why is because, that? Because right now, uh, the print media, especially for magazines, they work two to three months ahead. Let's say, for example, if not because of the MCO, uh, they have already confirmed everything for May issue. It means May issue is totally cut off already. They mm -hmm. are doing for June issue already. So they are preparing already for June. What are they supposed to focus? What are the highlights? What are the stories? Who are they supposed to interview? Everything is already been there. So if, for example, you just send in your press release right now for the magazines, it will be only be featured maybe in August onwards. Right. Why is it like that with magazines? Uh, they follow the publications schedule. So if the publisher says that, okay, this is my schedule, you have to follow it. No chance. So that's why right. they have to work ahead of it. Okay. How would you know, like, you know, for example, like if you say magazines and uh, you should mm -hmm. actually plan two to three months ahead, how would yeah. you know what are the themes that are going to come out in that particular magazine, for example? Okay, for let's just say big themes like Mother's Day, Raya, festive themes. These are the ones that are fixed, all right? Right. But rather those certain times they say, okay, we have traveling uh, month, okay? Right. Or uh, a health month. So these are the ones that are a little bit tricky. And this is where for a person, you need to actually have a close relationship with the editor. Then only they will tell you, hey, okay, this is my one-year team. So these are the teams that is already been right. confirmed and they will share it with you. So if not, you just have to take the assumption over there. Mm. And like like who um what was the other lady was saying, pray and hope. Right. So pray that's and where hope. it comes from. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So friends, uh, we are coming to the end right now. Uh, if you have any final questions, please share. And then uh, also, Melissa, before we end, uh, right. you know, we just like to thank you so much for no sharing problem. and thanks a lot for everybody who's watching in, who's tuning in, All right? right. Uh, this session is actually recorded. Uh, it's also, okay. you can see the recorded link below in the YouTube link. Uh, you can also go to the YouTube page and uh, cattraining.com.my. All right. So all the previous recordings are there. The The... The link for the previous recordings also below in the in the comment section. Okay, of course, we you know if you find this this kind of interviews useful, please do check out our previous interviews. Also, there are a lot of uh, you know interviews with very good personalities, and uh, with very good info. You can always check them out later. Do subscribe if you find them good, and uh, there'll be always a notification to you if you hit the notification button. All right. So with that, Melissa, thank you so much for Welcome. being here. I think a lot of our audience found it very useful, especially those who are running companies and all. And there are a lot of uh, press PR students who are also watching in today. I mm -hmm. think you gave some very good tips of what's real out there. You know, the kind of relationships you need to build and everything. Uh, thank you again. Welcome. We will hope to see you again in another show. Right? <laughs> Hopefully so. All right. Bye. Thank you, Mel.